All right, so what I'm going to show you how to do is how to get these SFM models into Gary's Mod. And I made this short checklist that goes over the steps of how to do it. I'm going to go over it in this video anyways. So first, you'll need to find a model to download. I downloaded this Chloe model because she has a lot of body groups. She has facial flexes. The only thing she'll really need is a collision model to get into Gary's Mod. So once your model is downloaded and extracted, um, just go into the models and keep going until you find the model file. And then just bring open crowbar and drag it straight on top and decompile it. So once it's done, you should have this QC file, the VTA, which is her facial flexes, and the rest of these are her body groups and her reference file. So I'm just going to delete these. We don't need those. So what you want to do first is open this QC file the whole thing inside Blender. Alright, so once you are in Blender, you'll need to import the QC file. But first I'm going to turn on the screencast key so you can see what I'm doing. And let's just delete all this stuff and then import the QC file. Go to wherever we decompiled it to. Make sure this is set to make a new armature. And import the QC. So once this has been imported, you'll notice it has all of her body groups. It has all of her jackets, it has her hair, everything that has been included is now right here. Um, we don't need all these dots are her VTA vertices. We can just delete those. Um, first thing we want to do is see how many bones she has. So go into select the bones and then go into edit mode. And we'll see she only has 95 bones which is perfect because the limit is 128. So we won't have to delete any or re-rig anything. It's going to be very easy. But what I'm going to do is import a standard citizen model to see just how large she is compared to him. Make sure it's set to make new armature and import him. And she is actually pretty tall compared to him. So I guess I'm going to um, either look up how tall she is and try and get her to a more natural scale. I kind of assume that these uh, citizens are around six foot tall, maybe a little shorter. Maybe they're around, you know, five foot ten or something like that, or five nine. So with that, we'll see how tall she is. So I went to her wiki page, and I found that her height is 5 foot 9. So we'll make her about that tall in the game. So since she is 5 foot 9, we can use that compared to the citizen and scale her down. So select all of her, and this will be easier if you go into the um, this proportion mode by pressing 5, and just start scaling her down, and I 
think it would be right around there. And then you would press Control A to apply the location, rotation, and the scale. We don't need him. So after we have the correct scale, what we can do is see if her bones, if her hand bones, match up to work with the finger poser in Gary's mod, and they don't. So we will use that citizen skeleton, look at the name of his bones, and make them the, name them the same thing. So take the left hand. And make sure that her left hand is also titled the valve biped standard uh, name. And I'll grab the first part of the thumb. And rename that as well. And since we have those, we don't really need the old skeleton. We can just kind of work off of this. So if thumb is named finger zero, the next part is named zero one, and then the tip is named zero two. The first finger named finger one, then one, one, then one, two. Next finger, middle finger is finger two. The middle part of her middle finger is two, one. And the end of her finger is two, two. Her third finger, her ring finger, is finger three. Next part is three, one, and then three, two. And her last pinky finger is finger four. First part is four, one, and then this is four, two. You want to do this exact same thing on the other side, but change all of the L's to R's. So make sure her right hand is a valve biped right hand. And we just need to copy the name of the fingers. But make sure it is the R. So it's right finger zero. And it's the same as the other side. This is zero one, zero two, and zero. Oops, make sure that is the right hand, or the right finger. And I'm going to copy that so I don't have to type it out a bunch. So this is right finger one one right finger one two just like the other side finger two two one 
two two ring finger is finger three middle part is three one end part is three two and last her right pinky is finger four middle part is four one and the end part is four two all right so now she is scaled to a right size her finger bones are named the correct things um if this was a if this was not an sfm model we would need to rename all of the materials but we don't because it's already set up for a source but if this was an MMD model or came from XNA, then you would probably need to rename all of these to match whatever uh, texture name you are using. But. Oh, also, if you have a root bone at the bottom, delete it. You don't need it and it'll mess up everything. So now she's the correct scale, her fingers are named the correct things, um, she should already have face posing, so the only thing she really needs now is you just need to export all of these different things individually with this new skeleton with the new names and then create a physics model and then it'll just be about done. So to export all of these go to this tab, uh, scroll down and set a directory and I'll set it the same spot. Um, actually I'll create new folder right here type titled um, exported I guess and I will set that to the export path so I will start with start with this this hair piece if you want to select both the mesh and the skeleton if you can it might be kind of hard so I'm just going to hide all of these layers to make it a lot easier so I'm going to grab her hair shift right click and I still like to apply the location rotation and scale before I export I'll make sure this is set to SMD and export her cap. It just takes a half a second. And then uncheck the skeleton and we can delete the cap since it's already exported. Then we'll do her t-shirt. That's done. Can delete it. We'll do her hair. Export it. Uncheck the skeleton and delete her hair that we had. Um, hair for jacket, I guess. We'll do that too. You're going to do this for every single piece that she has. She even has a ring somewhere. Make sure you get all of these small pieces like the rings. And we're going to export her, her face, her body, which is her reference. We're going to export that last. Because we're going to use that to build off of the collision model. OK, 
keep doing this, I might even end up skipping some of this uh, in the video. So you're not just watching me export a ton of things. Because it takes, it takes a little while when there's so many. So, down to the last bracelet hider, and that should be the last thing before we export her body. And you want to make sure there's not anything small that you missed. You can just click on the skeleton, and then... Control I to invert it, and it'll show you everything that is left. So it looks like we just have her body left. And the reason we move this to a different folder was because she has these shape keys, these facial flexes, and you do not want to overwrite these. You want to make sure you're using the original ones, because a lot of the times these can get distorted in Blender when you import them, and then if you export them and use them, then they'll be export they'll be uh, like distorted in the game and all weird looking. So just make sure that you don't use them, or when it exports, you can just delete it. So the last thing is her, apply location, rotation, scale, and export the reference. And this is going to take longer because she's also exporting those facial flexes. Alright, so now that everything is exported, um, let's just go to the, to the folder to check it out. So here is where we sent them to, which is right here. And like I said, delete her facial flexes that we exported. Delete them. And we'll go back and we'll take her QC and her original flexes and we'll just move them to this folder. So she should have everything with the new skeleton, her original flexes, and her original QC file. So what's left to do is make a collision model, and we'll do that now. So now we're back in Blender, and we're going to make a collision model. It's not too hard. Um, just go over here to Create, to start off, and just make a cube. And we are going to drag it up to her chest area and put it on x-ray so you can see through it. So with the collision model, each chunk, each block that you make, um, you're going to be able to grab with the, phys with the physics gun as well as be able to move that part with the ragdoll mover. So you only want to really do uh, the basic parts. You want to do each part of the spine. You want to do her root, hips, uh, her upper, lower arms, and her hand, and her upper, lower leg, and her foot, as well as her head, and her neck, and maybe her clavicle. We'll see. So, her upper bone of this. Her spine 2 starts from here and goes all the way to right here. So we'll make this about that size. So just go into edit mode and stretch it upwards, stretch it outwards, 
go to the side and make sure it's around the right size. And what you can do is go to these mesh tools and right here click subdivide and it'll divide that block up. And we'll do it we'll do it one more time. And then you can come up here, click smooth vertex, and it'll make it closer and closer to being round the more times you click it. So it's a bit more natural shaped, I guess. Oops. And I'm just going to bring some of these over. Just like that. And now we have a piece that is roughly her upper body shape. Make it a bit taller. Alright. So we'll do the same thing for each part of her body. We'll create a cube. And make it roughly the right size. Subdivide and smooth the vertex. I'm just gonna make sure this is the right, um, the right body part. And I'm going to turn the names on so I can make sure, um, just so I can make sure which piece I'm doing. So this is for line one. Stretch it out a little bit. And I'm just going to bring that in because it looks weird. Alright, so what you can do is you can actually just make a duplicate of this and use it down here as well. Make sure it's still the right size. You're kind of you're kind of making like a suit of armor for her to wear. It's like you're making a low poly version of her, so you want it to be right about the same size of her. Alright, so we have the spine 2, spine 1, spine, and then the hips, which I believe is the root bone. Yeah, it's the root bone. So, I'm actually going to adjust this a little bit. Uh, 
Come on now. Alright, and now I'm just going to do her legs. So I'll duplicate that, bring it down, and rotate it. Oh, and this goes all the way down to her knee, so we'll need to make that a lot longer. Duplicate it and make her other leg. And we can duplicate both of these at the same time and make them work as her lower legs as well. Make them a bit thinner. Make sure you're going into these side views to make sure they are not huge and actually match her body size. I'm just making it really simple, but if you want, you can go in and actually make it a lot closer to her body size. that. But I'm just going to keep it fairly simple. Alright, so next we have her feet. And let's going to duplicate that again. Smush them down. And actually those look really weird, so I'm just gonna delete that one and make a new one. Alright, so make sure that's about the right size, about the right shape. And we'll duplicate that one and use it for her other foot too. All right. So we still have her arms, her neck, head, and clavicle. So I'm just going to duplicate one of her legs. Rotate it. And make it fit instead of just making a whole new cube 
every single time. Make sure you're going in this above view. You can see how wide it is. All right. So I'm gonna duplicate that. Bring it over here. Make it a little bit thinner. Maybe a little bit longer too. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit, just so it matches the shape of her arm a little bit better. This doesn't have to be exact. Um, for her hand, I'm just going to duplicate her arm, chunk, and do it the same way. That's about good. What we can do for her arms is select them all, press S to scale, then make the X negative 1, and it will flip it completely. But let's duplicate it first. So we can use it for over here, and then flip it so we don't have to make a whole new arm. And that's off. It's right about there. So, for her clavicle, or her shoulder, I'm going to do this. I like to put them up here. And her torso is in the way of them a little bit. So I'm just going to take these, the edge of it, and push them down a little bit. Do the side at the same time. Then stick this right out there. The bone's over here, but that's where we're just going to put it. Um. I'll shrink it down a little more. Alright, duplicate that. Send it over. Mm, we can bring them forward a little bit more. And we're just going to use one of these to make the neck and the head. So the neck goes from here to here. So can do something like that. Make sure it matches on all sides. And that will be the neck chunk. Duplicate it again, and we can use 
leave this for her head. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exact, but make it a little bit closer to her head shape. Alright, that's close enough. So we have each part. So now what we want to do is rig this collision model to her skeleton. So let's just hide her for now. And select it. Then shift, right click to select the skeleton as well. Control P and set the parent to the object with empty groups. That way it will make all these vertex groups but they won't be um, they won't be set. So let's go to the hips and go to edit mode and make sure just the hips are selected. Make sure all of them are selected. If you're not in uh, wireframe mode and you just select the front it will only select half of it so make sure you are selecting the entire thing so make sure the hips are selected and hit a sign then go to the spine or let's work our way up spine one And spine two. And what this is doing is if you go to pose mode, it's making sure that those parts that we just rigged are moving with the skeleton. You see, since we haven't rigged the arm, it's not moving with it. So we're just going to continue doing that, rigging the whole thing, each part. So, spine two we already did, the neck, pretty close to the head, make sure you're just getting the neck. Not the shoulder. Sign that. I'm actually going to bring it down a tiny bit. Then we can do the head. Assign that. Which GRP? Make sure these are the right names. Um. For example, we have head in GRP head. So let's see. Let's go to object mode. Unhide her body. Let's see which one of these actually moves her head. So GRP head weirdly just moves her face. And head moves her entire head. So that's what we want to rig it to. All right, and we did that correctly, so that's good. Um, what's next? Let's see. The right shoulder is going to move 
this bone here, which is her clavicle or shoulder, and that's actually the left one. Make sure you're not mixing up the right and the left. This goes by the model's right arm and right shoulder. So slant that to the right shoulder, even though it's on the left. The right arm, right forearm, and the hand. All right, and then we'll go do it to the other side, her left. So left shoulder, left arm, the left forearm, and her hand. Last, we just have her legs to do. And I'm going to make sure we're grabbing the right one. So, left up leg is the one that moved her leg. So we're going to rig it to left up leg or right up leg, I guess. And then her knee, her lower leg is actually just called a right leg. So we'll select it. Make sure it's selected and assign it. Right foot, make sure that one is assigned to her right foot. And we'll do the same thing on the left side and she should be done. Left leg is assigned. And the left foot. So a good way to check is to grab her by the hips, her root bone, and just bring her around. And we'll see that there was one chunk on her hand that we missed. So make sure that you're getting each and every part. Oh, that's actually not the collision model, that's actually her hand. It isn't rigged properly right there. Huh. Alright, well, we can still export this, just name it Physics. and export to the same area. It won't have textures, that's fine. But what bothers me is that her hand isn't rigged. Mm -hmm. 
seems to be this bone right here, right? Finger O1. Oh, I guess it doesn't even have it. All right. That was my mistake earlier when I was renaming these. So it was probably fine to begin with. All right. And since she wasn't rigged properly for a second there, we will have to re-export her too. So after we created the physics model, we're going to go back into our folder where we sent it and set up the QC to use that physics model. So I'm going to open it up <clears throat> and notice it has all the flexes, all of the body groups down here, um, some alternate skins, and we just have one sequence line. But we also need this collision joint line, which I'm just going to grab from another model and just paste it right in there. But make sure it's the same name as yours. And make sure the root bone is hip because that's what it is. So we're going to save this, and we're going to compile it and see if it works. So just grab it, throw it right on the compiler, and hit QC, compile QC file. And kind of as I suspected earlier, she has too many flex controllers. Um, so we're going to have to remove some of them. Let's see. So this says it's on line 162. Let's see how many there are. Right here is the issue. So we have about four we had we'd have to get rid of. Um, let's get rid of, let's get rid of a nose wrinkler or flex. And to do this, you just put two slashes right before it. If you do that, then the compiler will completely ignore that entire line. So we have that, I'm just trying to find the less necessary ones. Um, you might not need the cheek concave since we already have the cheek puff. You can just use the reverse of that inside Gary's mod. It might not work. It might. Um, to remove four. Let's save it and recompile and see if it works. 166. So we still need to get rid of one more. Um, let's see. Let's get rid of the nose flares. We don't need those. All right, save it and recompile it again. And this is the part where you troubleshoot a lot. Unknown flex controller, flex sheet concave. Oh, that's right. If you get rid of them, where'd it go? 
when you get rid of them up here, you also have to get rid of them down here. So we remove Cheek Tongue Cave, left and right. We removed, um, I think just the nose flexes. So I'm just going to mark those out. Save it and recompile. All right. Could not load file. Oh, it's trying to load the animation file, but we removed it. Oops. So we're just going to remove that too. Actually, we'll just change it to. We still need this physics, um, this ragdoll one, but we'll just change it to the physics model. So make sure you have that. All right, save, recompile again. All right, and we're getting max flex verts. Error, exception, access violation. And what this means, it's just a generic error. It just means a lot of times that you have too many body groups on one model. It's just trying to um, put too many things on one model. So what we're going to do is go back to her body groups, and we're just going to uh, mark some of them out. Let's get rid of... Her wrist. Let's get rid of her neck body groups. Let's get rid of her ring. And hmm. Let's see if that's enough to compile. It might not be. But this is all trial and error for right now. So we're going to recompile and see if it'll work. All right. So removing those few things seem to have worked. Um, we'll see what it looks like in the model viewer when it's done compiling. So once done, you click View Model in Model Viewer. And I'll bring up the model, and it'll show you what she looks like. It's alright if it's, if it's all purple and black missing textures. What we're doing now is just making sure the physics model matches up, which it does, and the bones match up, which they also do. So the next thing to do would be to go into this physics tab and set all of these joint constraints. So we're going to do that now. So when you're in Half-Life Model Viewer, go over to the physics tab to set all of her joint constraints. And we'll select the left leg and you can hit this link and test it using the slider to see how far each of her joints will move. And I already have them set because I had to redo this portion um, something was wrong with the recording. But you, you basically want to just try to make all of the parts uh, seem kind of natural. Um, for example, this is her bottom leg. 
you wouldn't want to make it bend in reverse because that, that's just a broken leg. So, um, you can do it just a little bit, maybe about five, just to be a little bit flexible. But try and keep it pretty natural. Um, if your arms and legs can't bend that way, then the model probably shouldn't. I'm just going to go and set these for the X, the Y, and the Z values of every single part. Um, you don't need to do the hips. And when I do this, I don't set the shoulders. I keep them at zero. That way, um, when you're inside Gary's mod, they don't flop around. And you can still use the... Um, the ragdoll poser to move them. So for the, let's say we're posing your right arm, you would start with the X value, whichever one, but we can see that it, it can move about 60 degrees both directions. Um, the Y value I had set to move forward pretty far and back not as far. And for the Z value, which is up and down, can go up to about 100 degrees and down about 140. And you're going to want to have these uh, the same on the other side. So if her right arm is 100 degrees and 140 degrees, on the z-axis, you should do that on her left arm as well, so that they match up. So her left arm can also go up 140 degrees, and then down 100. So that's basically about it for the joint constraints. Um, when you're done, you're going to want to hit Generate QC right here. And it's easiest just to bring up Notepad and hit Control V just to paste it. And you're just going to be grabbing all of this and pasting it into our uh, QC. So it's going to rename your uh, your physics that we had set to ragdoll, so that way we could we, we're just going to copy the joint constraints down to this, and we don't need this ragdoll sequence. And once you have this copied in here, you're going to want to recompile it. So when some compiling, these should already be set. These should be saved to how you set them. And so now we have now we have a physics model. Physics model. It's all rigged. The collision joints are set. Uh, the last thing to do would be to add in any jiggle bones. Um, change, I like to change this to my folder so I know where, it, I know where they all go. Um, so what I noticed is that this model doesn't have any hair bones. It's kind of weird. So if you want to add any jiggle bones, I guess we would just add them to her breasts. 
so. So left pectoral and right pectoral. And I don't know the code right off my head, so I have different code from different models. Um, So let's have different jiggle bones for the hair. This is a much more simple uh, jiggle bone code. But I'm going to copy this one from her breasts. And rename it right pectoral and make another one that is called left pectoral. And I'll leave the code here for a second if you want to copy it. Close that, and now that it's saved, I'll recompile it and see how it looks. <laughs> All right, and here's the code to make her breasts about, about that bouncy. I'll just leave it that way. You should also be able to go in here and be able to see her different models of hair and all of her different tops even though there are the textures missing. But we have it in game, so. Um, so, the model's complete. The very, very, very last thing we have to do is take these body groups and make them a separate model since they couldn't fit onto the original one. So I'm just going to name this Close and I'll name it Chloe Accessories and I'm going to get rid of all of this. So the only thing that will be left will be the body groups that we did not have. All right. And because this is going to spawn as an effect and just be bone merged on, we don't need the joint constraints. Um, if you're making clothes as a separate model, I would 
I would say still have the jiggle bones on so that they match the model. Make sure save as close. And let's see how it compiles. Oops, I have to name it close dot qc. There we go. And just drag it on here. And it compiled very quickly. So we'll view the model in the model viewer. There doesn't seem to be anything there, but there is. She has the neck. I think these are all just very slightly different. Yeah. Um, she has this wrist band. So I think now we're ready to go to the model file and put this in your Gary's mod folder wherever you said you would put it. So. I'm just going to cut this whole folder and stick it right in there. So now we have Chloe and her accessories, those couple body groups that didn't fit. Um, and we're just going to take these materials, and these are already set to work with Gary's mod, so we're just going to copy those and paste them right here. Make sure they merge with the materials folder. And that should be it. So we're going to go into Gary's mod to check it out and see if everything turned out correctly. All right, now that we are in Gary's mod, we will see if it worked, how well it turned out. So go down to Games, Gary's Mod, and find whichever folder you put it in. I put it in Allen 13 folder, and then I think it was in right here. So right here we have the accessories, and right here we have the model. What the heck happened to her? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's really weird. Hmm. How about we go back? <laughs> what the heck? We'll go back and try and see why she came out so weird. Ah, so there's the problem. So. When we shrunk her down, we didn't shrink her VTA vertices. So, actually, instead of just, um, you know, going through all that and fixing all of them or transferring them from the original to the system, I just went into my recycle bin and I found the one that we deleted. So I'm just going to use that and see if it works. This isn't the original 
this is the one that I deleted. So this should have been here. So let's see if that fixed it. You notice it's Chloe reference.vta. So we're going to change that. Make sure that is set to Chloe reference because that is the one that we exported, not the original. All right. Now as I'm compiling, let's see how it looks. So it's not deformed. That's good. Um, so a lot of these are working. Very subtle. Um, so they, I guess that fixed it. So, um, I guess note to self, if you're going to rescale models, don't use the original VTA files. Actually export them and then use that one to work. So, let's go to the model file, send that over, alright, I guess we'll try and load up Gary's mod, hopefully it works this time. Alright, now that we are back in Gary's mod, uh, just scroll back down to where we left the model and she already looks a million times better than what she was and we also have these accessories let's see what we have the body group tool Uh, we have different hairstyles, different bra, and there's a face flex that makes her boobs fit better. Um, oh, her skin changer shirt, that's cool. So I have a bunch of different shirts, different bottoms, pants, um, jacket, shoes, all kinds of stuff. Um... Oh, that's kind of dark. Hmm. Hmm. Might be something that needs tweaking later. Oh, there. Okay. So, let's check out some of our facial flexes. <laughs> Alright, so these all seem to work. Pretty well. Oops. All right. Let's see if these these should work. These are the these are the extra clothes 
that couldn't fit on the model. And we'll just put it on with the bone mode tool. And it fit right on her. And so aside from her eyes looking kind of dark, I'd say she's pretty good. Alright, so I fixed her eyeballs. Um, it turns out that when you rescale models, it completely messes up their eye posing. So I'm going to show you. So on the left is the original QC file that we decompiled, and this one on the right is the one that we edited. And the only numbers I had to change were these three here, the eyeball, and these two here for the other eyeball. And I'm going to show you how to get these real quick. So go into Blender, and for her left eye, click the very center. And you'll notice these three values right here, the X, Y, and Z. which correspond to right here, the X, Y, and the Z. We can just take those from right here, when you click on the very center of her eye. Now the Y value is a little bit harder to get. Um, the easiest way is to select her whole eyeball and get just the edge of the outside. You need to get the very middle of her eyeball. When you have just this ring of the outside of her eye, press E, and then enter, and then S to scale it down. And you'll get that ring. Hit Alt-M, and just merge it at the center. And you'll get this dot at the very center of her eye. And you can take that Y coordinate and plug it in right here. And it'll be the same on the other eye. <clears throat> the only thing uh, is the X value, which is a negative. And I think that's about it.